All right, Tom Rudd, Morning Show, News Radio 800 WVHU, and online, 800WVHU.com. You know how people look back at history and uh, they realize that those people who dressed up as Indians, uh, if you're younger than 25, Native Americans, but those people that dressed up as Indians in the Boston Harbor then went aboard the king's ships and threw the king's tea into the harbor. They were known, at least now we consider them, patriots. And it was the uh, start of something very big, a revolution, and it was known as the Boston Tea Party. Well, recently, some folks in West Virginia also dressed up in uh, Indian costumes, and it wasn't for Halloween or trick-or-treat or anything like that. Bill Hudock, who is the Constitution Party candidate for governor in West Virginia, joins me now to tell me all about it. Phil, how you doing? Good morning, Tom. Great to be on. Uh, you and I have talked before about your concerns with the real ID and the driver's license in West Virginia. What has uh, transpired here for you recently at the uh, DMV? Well, last Friday, Pastor Butch Pa from Nicholas County, his brother Richard and I, and we're from Randolph County, had a modern-day tea party at the Summersville DMV. We got driver's licenses. It's part of a long battle that actually started in 1999. We made a statement that if this state is going to allow cross-dressers to get IDs, to get driver's licenses, How is it they can possibly discriminate against Christians with a conviction that they can't enter into a criminal database and give their God-given uniqueness, which is the mapping of their face? See, they make fingerprints optional, but they map your face, so that's always been our concern. Uh, We do not want to give our uniqueness to the state to track and trace and follow everything we do. So we had to make a statement we really needed driver's licenses because you can't do anything without proper ID. And, of course, mm-hmm. the DMV is not the people's favorite department of government, <laughs> <laughs> as you well know. Yeah, Okay. exactly. So here we are. We're in bizarre world, the world of, of transgenders uh, going to bathrooms and, and cross-dressers being accommodated. Here were three people who back in 8808 had fought for eight years had negotiated with the governor and the DMV. We had Senator Clark Barnes helping us. And we finally persuaded the governor to make an accommodation for us. And after driving for for over eight years without driver's licenses, on, on 8808, we got driver's licenses. That was rescinded by the Tomlin administration without any notice to us. When we went to get our driver's license renewed, they said, we discontinued it. There wasn't enough participation. When I talked to Governor Manchin, when we did get the accommodation, I said, you realize that the federal government is not going to be happy about this. To be honest with you, the people at the DMV were very accommodating to us. I mean, the local DMV in in Somersville. Mm -hmm. Uh, They were apologetic. We were there for four and a half hours because Mm -hmm. it took that long to run us through the the mill, they said, this is coming down from the top, from the national level. Mm -hmm. However, state is just being a prostitute and using this for revenue and to uh, abide by whatever the federal government says. We have a world out of control. And so we made this statement. I wanted to get around to the general populace who, who see that they can't do anything against this oppressive government. But as in Boston around 250 years ago, they said, you know, we're not going to stand for this. Mm -hmm. It's our government. We're the people. They're the servants. Right. Uh, Okay, so you you had the okay from then Governor Manchin, and, you know, you had a driver's license without, you know, having to go through the the things that you didn't want to do. And then Tomlin, when he got in office, rescinded all that. It was there, And the reason given was because there weren't enough people doing it? That's correct. And yet, when people asked to get the uh, non-biometric, uh, they, they told them that 
you, you had to let your license expire before you could get it. <laughs> so they wouldn't even let someone get one unless their license expired, and, and it was only done in Charleston. So we had to go to Charleston because that was the only place where they had a modified program mm-hmm. so that the digital image could be deleted, and they just kept a paper copy in Charleston. Didn't go into Interpol, which is an international criminal database. Mm-hmm. What uh, and and so you and and uh, Pastor Butch and his brother, you all were concerned basically because you didn't want to give the government more information than they needed. Exactly. We have a police state. In 1999, I realized I couldn't enforce a barcoded wearing of IDs in Elkins, and after teaching 25 years, I said I couldn't penalize students for not wearing a barcoded ID. I said it was conditioning for a police state, and we know what the mark of the beast is. It's the police state on steroids. And I was fired for not enforcing barcoded IDs, and I had to fight that. And that went to the state Supreme Court, and I did win. The Rutherford Institute took my case on that. So this has been a long battle with a tyrannical government trying to micromanage, attract, control the populace. We're supposed to be the private sector, and they're supposed to be the public sector. And yet the cameras are turned on us. Don't dare, you know, watch them. Watch every move you make. People are more afraid of the government than they are of anything. So you and uh, Pastor Butch and and his brother went to the DMV, dressed up in these Indian costumes, and now you've got your driver's license and uh, you're you're in full uh, Indian wear, right? That is correct. I had a full headdress on, (laughs) an Indian top. They had to call Charleston to get permission to take our picture because they weren't sure what to do with us. Yeah. You know, what do you do with three Native Americans? <laughs> but the staff at the DMV, like I say, were very accommodating, very nice, very polite. Sure. And the people in the DMV that were there jumping through the hoops, they resonated with what we were doing. Everyone should resonate with it, mm-hmm. unless you're a control freak. Right, right. Okay, so this is an ongoing battle. You feel somewhat satisfied? I'll be much more satisfied, Tom, when other people exercise at least what they can do without hurting anybody or or causing any chaos. It seems like we're living in this world where chaos reigns and everyone has a feeling that is almost all bad news. And that's why Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders are doing so well, because people are realizing it's like George Carlin said, it's a big club and you ain't in it. I think the reason we have so few people participate in elections is because they've given up on the system, this corporate system. And that's what I've uncovered is that we have a, a we have corporate government, not government of, by, and for the people. They're in a different club. We are to serve them, and they have all the power, and absolute power corrupts. We have to do what we can to restore our Christian heritage. And it's really a moral battle, this transgender use of bathrooms and, and cross-dressers getting pictures. It's crazy. At first, we were going to dress up like women and, and wear burkas. But I thought we have to make this symbolic, as did the people in Boston. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. Phil Hudock has been fighting for things that he believes against government tyranny for a very long time. You've had a lot of battles. We talked to you before about battle over immunizations. Your daughter didn't finish school up there. Uh, well, she finished school, but she wasn't allowed to finish with her classmates because she refused uh, vaccinations. Uh, briefly go over that history for me. Yes, my daughter's senior year, they came up with a policy. Now, not law. See, we're in policy world, Tom. They came up with policy that seniors had to have boosters of MMR, and um, I forget there were three, three different vaccines, right. three different things. I had already decided that vaccines, while there is a place for them, we had serious concerns. And my daughter made the decision that she couldn't do it for numerous reasons, medical, philosophical, religious. So she took a stand, and entering her senior year, then she wouldn't take the the vaccinations. She was warned. She finally received a letter from uh, the superintendent that if she went to school the next day, she would be arrested for trespassing. Mm -hmm. So we had a discussion over the weekend, and I said, you decide what you want to do. You can go to school and and do that. 
civil disobedience, or you can not go to school and make a statement. She decided to uh, not go to school, uh, not disrupt the school environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, We contacted the local newspaper, and that morning she did an interview, a video interview in the newspaper office, and they ran a story that day. Mm -hmm. She was homebound, instructed uh, Mm -hmm. the rest of the year until graduation. Two days before graduation, the superintendent calls and, and says that she won't be able to graduate. And we'd been asking. She had her gown. She was valedictorian. Two days before, we get a call on a Thursday. She's going to graduate on Saturday. And we got a call that she could not participate. She could sit in the audience, mm-hmm. but she couldn't participate <laughs> as a graduate. Yeah, I made three calls, one to the a uh, local judge, circuit judge, who had, who, who had ordered her to be homebound instructed mm-hmm. uh, to the newspaper and to the State Department of Education. And fortunately, I found out later that the uh, superintendent, Dr. Fairs, intervened and said, what are you trying to prove? Let mm-hmm. her graduate. I'm very proud of her. She's stuck up for her, her rights. And really, we got to think, as Christians, we have blessings. You don't have to do a right. You have the right to do it. Let's think differently about this. We have blessings from God and responsibilities, and those blessings and responsibilities require that we have a duty to do things like, you know, be our brother's keeper. That's why I'm in so many battles, and I don't look for them. They just come to me. They find you sometimes. How old is your daughter now? She's at d College. She's going to graduate a semester early. She's going to graduate this coming December. I'm real proud of her. She's going into psychology and wants to... uh, work with people in a Christian manner. You know. Did she ever get uh, immunizations before even going to uh, Davis and Elkin? <laughs> That's interesting because my wife and my daughter went to uh, an, an orientation. They were sitting next to this man. I can't remember his position, but he was number two at the college. He was directly under the president. This man turned to my wife and said, is Olivia going to, to pick uh, D&E? Because I think it was some kind of a scholarship uh-huh. Um, thing that they were having. And my wife said, well, it depends. And he said, it depends on what? And, and she said, well, it depends on whether she's forced to take vaccinations for college. And the man said, well, we'll make an accommodation for that. And they did. She didn't have to get a vaccination. And they said she might have to sign a waiver, Yeah, but she wasn't required to sign a waiver. So I think when people stand up, that causes people in positions of power to take notice and say, you know, do we really want to do this? If we just roll over, yeah, they're just going to push it. And the hypocrisy of the whole thing was you were a school teacher in, in Randolph County, the same county as your daughter at the same time, and you were able to go into these schools, but you didn't have a, uh, you didn't have the vaccinations. That is correct. My <laughs> wife and I both taught at the same school where, where my daughter and three other daughters graduated. Here it was interesting. While she was at home, My wife and I would go to the school where she was supposed to be. You're right. We didn't have vaccinations, and all those people that would come to graduation don't have vaccinations, and all the visitors that come into our school. And let me tell you, when I first started teaching, we hardly ever saw anyone in the school that wasn't on the staff. Now you've got this inspector, that inspector, uh, and they don't have vaccinations, so it's a big joke. Yeah, it's total hypocrisy. It's symbolism over substance. It's just about control. I know that. Uh, all right, Phil, hold on here. I want to uh, take a break and come back. We'll talk a little bit about your candidacy for governor uh, running as the Constitution Party nominee in West Virginia. Phil Hudock uh, has gotten his uh, driver's license, and he looks, uh, well, he looks like an Indian because he has a full headdress, everything on. All right, 721, back in a moment on the Tom Rudd Morning Show. Uh, He's also the Constitution Party candidate for governor. And, uh, Phil, you've been involved, uh, as we said earlier, in in several different uh, uh, protests, if you will. What is your relationship with the now-imprisoned Thomas David Deegan of uh, Wood County Mineral Wells? Yes, three men, Thomas one, uh, Gene Stoniker from Beckley, and myself, uh, took a case to the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals. And we proved without a doubt that we have suspended government since 1933 in the War Powers Act and the the Great Depression. Uh, We have corporate government, which is not government of by and for the people. And we have the right to petition 
for redress of grievances, which is exactly what we did. And when we, when we didn't get any response from the legislature and then the governor and the state attorney general, we filed a complaint in the West Virginia Supreme Court with 16 writs of mandamus. Unfortunately, when you go against the power structure and they're illegitimate, and we knew we could be in some serious uh, uh, danger, and that did pan out because Thomas, who was much easier to vilify than Gene or I, I'm, I'm 66 and Gene's 76, and you know, Gene's a grandfather, and unfortunately, Thomas was guilty of a, of a thought crime in this new police state. Uh, he didn't harm anyone. As a matter of fact, his uh, rude awakening came back around 2000, I think about 2008, when he was using uh, marijuana for medicinal purposes, growing it. Uh, he had been in a bad car wreck, and he was just trying to restore his health. Mm -hmm. Because of being guilty of, of a crime against the state by taking one of God's plants, which could be used to help him, they easily vilified him for making a statement on a private conference call and saying he threatened the government. He didn't relay a threat to anyone. Mm -hmm. He was talking about a possible scenario. And the sad part is this, Tom. Everybody that's listening has said things that the government could say is a threat of terrorism. Okay, Everybody. what what exactly did Thomas Deegan say? This was a, He was on a conference call. How many people were on this conference call? So back in September last year, right? Yes, I would say several hundred. It's hard, hard to tell. I was not the board operator. Several hundred people, okay. Mm -hmm. what, what did he say? You don't have to quote it, but, but basically, uh, what did he say? Well, you know, and this was a series of about 20 or, or 25 different conference calls. And, and, of course, when you pick something small out of, you know, a, a progression of learning that was given here, then you can take things out of context. But basically, he was saying that, the government is illegitimate and that the people would have to, it's their duty. That's, it, the Declaration of Independence said it is, it is our right and, and our duty to throw off tyranny. Mm -hmm. And so he was saying, you know, you go to the Capitol with, with sufficient numbers of people and you say, vacate. Mm -hmm. And if the police pulled up and were a threat to you, that you have the right to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And you do have the right to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. That's all he said? Yes. And so uh, he's now in jail. Uh, the, the story I found on it was from March, uh, and it said that he was facing one to three years, but he was sentenced in April to eight years. How, how did it end up being eight years? Because at the time that uh, this happened, he was on home confinement for the, for the marijuana I see. problem, uh -huh. and they said he violated home confinement, so they tacked on another five years, another one to five. Good night. Do terrorists take courses, I'm sorry, do they take the course of taking a case to the state Supreme Court? Is that what terrorists do? Uh, no. The thing is, you know, maybe he said something that he shouldn't have said to, to, to some people who were listening. I mean, obviously somebody, I guess, turned him in. Actually, I posted all these, these calls. Oh, so they were out there. You you just mm -hmm. took the call. I mean, you didn't think there was anything wrong with it. You posted it and somebody saw Okay. If he had killed somebody, if Thomas Deegan had killed somebody, would he have gotten eight years for that? Uh, the bond was three thousand three hundred thousand dollars cash, yeah. three hundred thousand dollars cash only, and he's in solitary confinement and he won't sign papers, and so he's actually a political prisoner who is being persecuted for standing up for his convictions. That's why he's in prison because he stood up, and now in Huttonsville, he is being curtailed. He can't even see the chaplain because he won't sign papers, basically putting himself into the corporate sphere and giving up his God-given uniqueness, his, you know, just like I did with the, with the driver's license. It's, it's the same battle. It's the same battle. They want you to surrender to their club so they have control over you. Not a, not a real man, but a fiction. See, corporations are fictions, and that's what our government is now, corporations, fictions. Is Thomas Deegan getting uh, – is he going to uh... – appeal does he even have an attorney because i noticed he represented himself no he can't have an attorney tom that would breathe life into the beast which was beaten in the state supreme court and there is no proper court now in the state because they're all in default and dishonor mm -hmm. so he can't otherwise he would say well i i go against you know what i said before and i'm now giving you power 
He said, you don't have the power because you're illegitimate and usurping. There is no place to appeal. Wow. This is the people's problem. This is our problem. That's why I won't quit. That's why I put this on local television. This is why I have my websites, whodoc.info, whodoc.com. That's why I'm running for governor. Understand one thing, Tom. It's constitutional governor, not the kind of governor we have right now, the corporate governor. Right. I'm running for constitutional governor, and I would instruct the state attorney general, Morrissey, to do the right thing. Uh, Constitution Party candidate for Governor Phil Hudock. Uh, what's that website again where folks can learn more? Hudock.info, that's about this rule of law battle. And Hudock.com, that's more about my running for governor. All right. All righty, folks, welcome back. We're going to wrap up the lesson, and uh, you watch more current events while we were taking a little break there, and I uh, hope you caught what's being said because, again, Scripture has proven what was going to happen in the last days. And I read it to you to show the Scripture that the heathen rages, that they imagine vain things, that perilous times will come, and all this points to the fact that I'm telling the truth. Now, I'm going to read one more verse, and we'll go back to the current events. In Proverbs chapter 8, you read with me, please. I'm going to read this verse. Now I want you to listen to what the Word of God says. I, it's, it's, there's no point in, in arguing the point of what the Scripture says. It says what it says. And I, How many of you got frustrated when you show somebody something in the Bible and well, I don't understand it that way? Mm-hmm. You, you ever done that? Mm-hmm. Well, I just don't see it that way. Proverbs Actually, chapter... You're mature Christian, supposedly. Yeah, exactly. Chapter 8, verse 36. Phil, what's that say? Do you find it? But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. That's true. Mm. It's because they're loving the dark side. Is that complicated? I mean, whose soul are the, whose soul are they destroying? Their own. Their own soul. And if you hate me, then you love death. Because what does sin bring forth? Death. Death. Mm-hmm. The okay. wages of sin is death. Now I know that people don't like to think about these things, but it doesn't take a, take the it doesn't change the facts that's Never happening. Now, but it starts right here too. Oh yes, it does. Yeah. How many of <coughs> you ever saw someone that's always miserable and down, downtrodden and hateful and bitter, and they just you can't not be around anybody. Yeah. Man like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. And and, and they, they they're never happy. There's some you know they just always have something bad going on. You know what that person's missing, don't you? Yeah. God. The God. joy of Christ. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and Butch, sometimes when those people are leaving, is the happiest moment when they're gone. That's true. It brightens the room. Now, I'm going to show you something here, folks. I'm not, I mentioned this years ago, and I know it never happened. Well, I want to see this right here. This is scripture. This is from a telegraph. This is a headline in the hour from the telegraph. Phil, what's that say? Killing babies no different from abortion, experts say. <coughs> Excuse me. There is no difference. There is no difference. Murder is murder. All that hate him love death. Mm-hmm. Parents should be allowed to have their own have their newborn babies killed because they are morally irrelevant. Oh. Did you hear what I just said? Morally mm-hmm. irrelevant. And in their lives is no different than, than, to an abortion, a, a murder. And they, they're right, it isn't. A group of medical expert eth, 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 ethicists linked to Oxford University has argued. This article was published in a journal of medical ethics. Published in the journal of medical ethics. Yeah. What's the word ethics mean? What's an ethic? I'm not really taught, like, but a, a moral standard is supposed to be, right? Uh-huh. It says newborn babies are, are not actual persons and do not have a moral right to life. What? The, the academics also argue that parents should be able to have their baby killed if it turns out to be disabled when it is born. Life. Folks, am I, I just read the scriptures to you proving this. How much more proof do you need? You hate me, you love death. Yeah. Butch, but what that means is that if they allow this, then it won't be long down the line that the government's going to make a choice if your child should live or not. Exactly. Because right. they're going to pay. <coughs> well, then, the same thing say without natural affection. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, dogs and cats and deer and bear protect your youth more than a lot of parents do, human parents. Those are. 
The article, the article entitled "After Birth Abortion: Why Should the Baby Live?" was written by two uh, two, uh, two professors, uh, Alberto Gabalani and Francisca Minerva. Rather than being actual persons, newborns are potential persons. Potential. Goodness. They explain both a fetus and a newborn baby. Cer <coughs> newborn certainly are human beings and potential persons, but neither neither is a person in the sense of a subject of a moral right to life. We take person to mean an individual who is capable of attributing to their own existence some at least basic value, such as being deprived of this existence represents a loss to her. As such, as they argued, as such, they argued it was not it was not possible to damage a newborn by preventing the, her from being from developing the potentiality of be, to become a person in the morally relevant sense. What? Did you want to hear something really weird? <laughs> person, in a way, what they're saying is right. It is a person. It is a, the definition of a person is not a living man or woman. Nope. The definition of a person is a creation of the state. Do you understand how this tie together? You follow me? Yeah, sure. In other words, th these aren't really people. You know, when they say person, do you realize corporations are classified as persons? Yep. Because they are creations of the state. Yep. So therefore, the state, you're not killing a, by their definition, a person. A, 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 a viable a man entity. or woman yep. or we the people, one That's of right. we the people. So who become God? Right. And God can justify anything. Exactly. And they're God. Exactly. Yeah. So are you, are you seeing this as being peerless times, Phil? <laughs> Now, in case you're curious, now don't get excited, but you get to pick 31 different gender IDs today. 31? 31. 31. 31. It's only 15. No, nope, there's 31. Wait till they get to Heinz 57. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> That's 57 more. New York City has just passed an ordinance as a test where there are 31 different gender identities. An employer must be aware, now pay attention, I'm, like, I'm not making this up. An employer must be aware of and will be now forced to consider hiring before looking elsewhere. These are 31 genders, bi-gendered, cross-dresser, drag king, drag queen, femme queen, female to male, FTM, I guess that's, I don't know what that's going to mean, non-op, H-I-J-R-A, whatever that is, pan-gender, I guess that's multi-gendered. Pan actually is, is a demonic term. It, it is, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Many gods. Transsexual, trans, size transsexual. Trans person, woman, man. I don't like the next one. Butch. <laughs> Two spirit. Uh, is there a butch? Yeah, it's a butch. Everything trans, a gender, third sex, gender fluid. Non binary, transgender. Adrogene, adren, adren, A N D R O G Y N E. Androgynous, Androgynous like, like, yeah. like that. Gender gifted, <laughs> gender gifted, gender blender. <laughs> gender blender. Person of transgender experience, androgynous, MTF, I guess it's male or female, non-op, gender queer, gender blender again. And if you're hiring them, you rate an one you're going to hire by points. And a disabled Beck is two points, a homosexual is two and a half points. Oh, oh no. Only points? Points, yes. Yes. Human so someone who say fought for our freedom is not as good as a person as a person who's a transgender. No, no, get more points if you're transgender. We're going back to um, what was it? Blacks counted what percent of a person? How many hmm? points does what was it? Blacks counted. I don't think I did. Uh, uh, what, 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 no, I thought it was one Blacks? third. Oh, maybe it was one third. I'm not real sure. Maybe. Isn't it going Indians. back to that? Partial person. Indians didn't get any points. Any po no points for Indians. How? The mayor, the mayor, <laughs> the mayor of a major in American city will punish you for not bowing to transgenders. Bowing? Is, bowing. A dino. It is really amazing how rapidly liberals have forced, and it's not liberals, folks, it's Satanists, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. forced Americans to bow before the transgender lobby by the way they browbeat us in accepting homosexuality as a preferred lifestyle choice. Now, folks, let's let, let that sit. Preferred. Yeah. Preferred lifestyle choice. Fifty years ago, it was an abomination. If you yeah. come out with homosexual, you were ostracized, and you should be. It still is an abomination. It is, but now we must accept it. If we do, then if we don't, then we're haters. We're bigots. <laughs> now, I want to be a hater, and I want to be a bigot. Well, if I read Isaiah right, he said, "If you don't hate me, we don't love me." But anyway, now the mayor of the Big Apple is hoping he can find find the hell out of you if you don't ask every freak and weirdo what they want to be called. This is from the Washington Times. We, we know, is that what it said? Do what now? If you don't do what? They'll find the hell out of you. 
If you don't. Fine. Fine. Yeah. If I any. Greetings, cu greeting customers as Mr. and Mrs. or even not using the pronoun Z or Zer could prove costly for New York City businesses under the rules drafted by Mayor Bill de Blasio's bureaucrats. The Gotham Mayor's Commission on Human Rights says entities that fail to address customers by their preferred gender pronouns and titles are in a violation of the law could be, and could be subject to penalties up to $250,000. And that comes from a city of New York. Babylon. Yeah, yeah right, I heard this, this new mayor of New York is like... Oh, he's something else. Way out there. The, the, uh, the commission issued a legal enforcement guidance for the New York City's human rights law, which now requires employers and converted entities to use an individual's preferred name, pronoun, and title, uh, regardless of the individual's sex assigned at birth, anatomy, gender, medical history, appearance, or the, or the sex indicated on the individual's ID. It lists several examples of violations that could result in fines, including the intentional and repeated refusal to use an individual's preferred name, pronoun, or title. For example, repeatedly calling a transgender woman him or mister after she had made clear which pronouns and title she uses, the guide says. The maximum civil fine that, that the commission may impose upon misgendering, misgendering, misgendering. is $125,000. But when the violation is the result of a willful, wanton, or malicious conduct, the maximum fine can double up to him fifty thousand. And then you go to debtor prison. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that incredible? How how did we go from putting a man on the moon to going to went to whining about how a business has to ask what gender a customer is? You can't force people to, to be more civil, but New York City will make sure that any business that doesn't follow the politically correct standards will be sued up and down. JFK put a man on the moon. Obama put a man in a women's bathroom. Yep. Well, you know, uh, the Constitution Party, a lot of people left the Constitution Party and there was this big schism. Schism, schism yeah. yeah. Schism, because schism. because they said, I shouldn't do anything against political correctness. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you got to kill correct political correctness. How can you be a Christian and not? I know. Well, Obama declared June uh, lesbian, gay, homosexual, bisexual, and transgender pride month. I think he did that. Uh, that was last year, too. He, uh, did he? Well, so, this, this yeah, proclamation. This is, is why he said this year. Since our founding, America has advanced on an unending path toward becoming a more perfect union. Okay. This, yeah, this journey, led by forward-thinking individuals who have set their sights on reaching for a brighter tomorrow, has never been easy or smooth. The fight for dignity and equality for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people is reflected in the tireless dedication of advocates and allies who strive to forge a more inclusive society, except for Christians. They have spurred sweeping pro progress by changing hearts and minds and by demanding equal treatment under our laws from our courts and in our politics. This month, we recognize all they have done to bring us to this point, and we, co we commit to bending the arc of our nation toward justice. Last year, landmark Supreme Court decision of guaranteeing marriage equality in all 50 states. Now, by the way, that did not do that. That no. was not done. No. Right. Was a historic victory for LGBT, LGBT Americans in ensuring dignity for same-sex couples and greater equality across state lines. For every partnership that was not previously recognized under the law, and for every American who has, was denied their basic civil rights, and folks, pay attention, civil rights. It started out with what called constitutional rights, then human rights, and civil rights. None of my rights. Anyway, uh, this monumental ruling instilled newfound hope, affirming the belief that we are all more free when we are treated as equals. LGBT individuals deserve to know the country stands beside them. That is why my administration is striving to better understand the needs of the LGBT adults and provide affordable, welcoming, and supportive housing for aging LGBT Americans. It's also why we oppose subjecting minors to the harmful practice of conversion therapy you know what that is? Conversion therapy. therapy. They're trying to teach. The, they want to teach the child this is wrong. It's called conversion therapy. Uh -huh. Reeducation. Yeah, yeah. Well, they. But that we can't tell them that they're wrong and try to bring them back to right. That's wrong. So it's also why we oppose subjecting minors to the harmful practice of conversion therapy, and why we are continuing to promote equality and foster safe and supportive learning environments for all students. We remain committed to addressing the health, yeah. the, the health disparities in the LGBT community. Gay and bisexual men and transgender women of color are, are at particularly high risk for HIV. And we have worked to strengthen our national HIV AIDS strategy to reduce new infections, increase access to care, and improve health outcomes for the living with, a, for the living with HIV. 
Despite the extraordinary progress of the past few years, LGBT Americans still face discrimination simply for being who they are. I signed an executive order in 2014 that prohibits discrimination against federal employees and contractors on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. Now, let me make a point here. Anything that receives federal funds must follow these guidelines. Exactly. That includes schools. Anything is 501c3 as well. Yeah, exactly. And the writing's on the wall. If you've got that designation, it's coming. I urge the Congress to enact legislation that builds upon the progress we have made because no one should live in fear of losing their job simply because of who they are or who they love. And our commitment to combating discrimination against the LGBT community does not stop at our borders. Advancing, now listen, it doesn't stop at our borders. In other words, Babylon takes it to the whole world. Advancing the fair treatment of all people has long been a cornerstone of American di di diplomacy, and we have made defending and promoting the human rights of LGBT individuals a priority in our engagement across the globe. In line with America's commitment to the, na to the notion that all people should be treated fairly and with respect, champions of this cause at home and abroad are upholding the simple truth that LG LGBT rights are human rights. Remember Civil when, rights and human rights. Remember when the uh, headlines <coughs> about mm, 15 years ago were... Iraqis free to sin. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. we freed them. Yeah, to we sin. did. We did. Babylon is forcing the unclean spirits. Revelation eighteen on the whole world. Now I know we just read about it. Married Christian rock star admits I am gay. Yep. Thanks, Trey Pearson. He's a Christian. He's Christian. Married two children and the lead singer of a rock group every day Sunday. But now Trey Pearson making headlines for coming out of the closet and admitting he's homosexual. Uh huh. In an open letter published on Tuesday in 614 Magazine, this 35-year-old says, I grew up in a very conservative Christian home where I was taught that my sexual orientation was a matter of choice and had put all my faith into that. I had never before admitted to myself that I was gay, a homosexual, let alone to, to anyone else. I never wanted to be homosexual. I was scared of what God would think and what all the, these people I loved would think about me, so it never was an option for me. I have been suppressing these attractions and feelings since adolescence. I've tried my whole life to be straight. I married a girl, and I even have two beautiful little kids. My daughter Liv and is six. My son Beckman is two. So much of the, uh, so much of, the, of me has so much. So much of me has so much heartache that I couldn't grow up loving myself for who I am. I could not accept myself. I was so scared that God would hate me, that all the people I loved would be wouldn't see me the same way. I couldn't allow me. I couldn't allow being homosexual to be an option. I just hoped and prayed with with everything in me that I could just be straight, that I could be attracted to women, and that would be, uh, that, and that would work. Uh, all work I tried, despite the fact that the Bible overwhelmingly condemns homosexuality in both the Old and New Testament. Pearson cited this close relationship between the two male characters in ancient Israel to help calm his mind. Mm -hmm. You know, in math they call it lowest common denominator. Mm -hmm. LCD. I think it's Lucifer's common denominator. Oh, it is. Joe Biden, Christians violate gay rights simply by existing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Did you all hear that? Uh, we're in there again. Joe Biden, y'all know who he is. Right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Christians violate gay rights simply by existing. He really does hate, doesn't he? He does. Uh, he said that uh, I just read part of it. In, in too many places, the LGBT community members face violence with impunity, mistreatment by police, then denial of health care, or religious, religious condemnation and social isolation. Mm -hmm. We hate because we're Christians. Yep. <laughs> well, two more things I'll get to read a couple of scriptures. I'll close and go back to what you want to show the field. A de sex society is a dehumanized society. Give me all a copy of this. This is a very good article. <laughs> As usual, tyranny comes disguised as civil rights. Let that sink in. Tyranny comes disguised as civil rights. Mm -hmm. The latest exhibit of this, general, of this general rule is President Obama's directive that seeks to force a transgender bathroom, locker room, and dorm policy on, on the entire nation, starting with cool school children. Many of us are taken aback by this news, but we really shouldn't be. The order is merely a, the latest incarnation of a long line of social engineering. I like it. Social engineering. Social engineering. Mm -hmm. The goal is always, as is always the case with such movements, is, is to remake humanity. Remember they did teaching years ago entitled Creation Out of Order? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What the people behind this latest version won't tell you is that their project requires each and every one of us to deny our own humanity. The transgender movement has never been about gender. It's all about sex. 
Sex is a real target. Gender is merely the publicized, the politicized uh, linguistic vehicle that facilitates a legal ban on sex distinctions. There, there aren't a whole lot of dots to connect to uncover the logic of where this leads. If you abolish sex distinctions, but in law, you can abolish state recognition of biological family ties, would that be part of it? To dissolve the family? Oh, oh it's yeah. always been war on the family. And the state can re regulate personal relations and, co and consolidate power as never before. Physical reality exists independent of gender ID or non-description law or any man-made law. Laws have no power to make reality go away, but they can but they can change how people behave in response to reality. They can enforce this they can enforce disregard for reality <coughs> through speech protocols, social and economic pressures, invasion of privacy, and thought policing. And that is what the effect of Obama's executive order is all about. It will serve to outlaw speech that the IDs males as males and females as females. At the moment, it may not seem that way since we see people striving to pass uh, as one specific sex or the other. But trust me, we're all, we're all being forced to transition into conformity of thought. In New York, you can now be fine if you don't re-engineer your speech and thoughts to allow with the new and ever-changing pronoun protocols. We're being pushed to evolve rapidly from, from laws that seem to allow male-female distinctions to laws that will categorically reject those distinctions in the not-too-distant future. Federal forms are already reflecting these changes by erasing sex terms such as mother and father. And at, and at every turn, we're seeing the specific term sex replaced with the meaningless, ambiguous term gender. This puts us on the path to banning rec recognition of the, of, re of the reality that every single human being exists through the, the union of one male and one female. There are no exceptions to this reality. You exist at the union of, of the two, two opposites through whom you were created. So the administration's action is in order for somewhat for a somewhat suicidal type of behavior modification. It attempts to make us deny the reality of our humanity. In a real sense, this amounts to a denial of our very existence. All such denials of reality require heavy-handed censorship. We have already seen the governors of South, South Dakota and Georgia fold in the face of threats that federal funding would be withheld and big businesses would withdraw from the states if they attempted to enforce single-sex bathrooms. Getting free people to reject freedom may seem a tall order. How, you might ask, could people ever be convinced to let go of their families and, and to consent to such a dystopian social structure? How do you get public opinion on board with an agenda that leads them to deny the reality of their own humanity? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. How did it get us here? Apathy? Yeah, a lot of ways. Fear? A lot of ways. Imagine what a biology textbook in 20 years is going to be. Oh. I don't think we want to know. We don't know what the history textbooks are like today. Yeah. There are lots of pieces of this puzzle, including the erosion of social trust, the breakdown of family, social polarization, and growing ignorance of history. But the groundwork has been laid over a long period of time. First, virtually all outlets of communication had to be on board. Hollywood, academia, media, check. All medical personnel, particularly mental health personnel, had to be educated to comply with the transgender program or risk losing their license, check. The educational establishment had to imbue, 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 children, imbue, imbue children with the, the, the ideology. Check. Large corporations had to get on board as stakeholders and enforcers. Check. And of course, the push to illegally de sex society had to be embedded Trojan horse style with a slightly alien idea with the stick slogan marriage equality. Check. Churches had to be brought on board so, so that even religious religion became a conduit for anti-truth. Check. Social, emotional, and economic pressures had to be established to censor anyone who dared to question the wisdom of it all. Check. Any such person had to be labeled as a bigot, a hater, or a non-person. Checkmate. Mm -hmm. huh. I was going to say, checkmate should come at the end. At this point, the most primal and universal human fears come to pay. The fear of being socially rejected. Now, how many of y'all know that's a biggie? Mm -hmm. To be rejected mm -hmm. by your peers is not pleasant. Peer pressure is it? powerful. It's called powerful. herd mentality. It yeah. is. Self-censorship takes off. People start falsifying what they believe until they eventually don't even know what they believe anymore. Is that, is that type of insanity? Or why they mm -hmm. believe it? Nobody can talk openly to one another. In the end, it has, it has through, th th through we are each being marched. In the end, it, it's as though we are being marched into a separate so solitary confinement cell. That's what happens when the free association takes a hit when the state servers particular relationships, relationships in the name of the collective togetherness, then, with, then when we can't verify reality with one another anymore because we are so afraid of being ostracized, we end up living in a, the age of delusion. Yeah.
Yeah. Well, one nice thing is no man can take your salvation. Amen. No man can take it. We'll wrap up by five minutes. I'll read a couple more verses. But I, want to just, I just thought this was kind of good. Lord, let my aim be true. Remember when that was said? Oh, this was uh, Mel Gibson. Yes. And this goes on further. And my hand faster than those who would seek to destroy me. That's, by the way, that's a prayer in the Bible, by the way. Not the same wording, but the same thing. Mm -hmm. Grant me victory over my foes and those that wish to do me harm to me, harm to me and mine. Let not my last thought be if I only had a gun. And Lord, if today is truly the day that you call me home, let me die in a pile of empty brass. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Now let's close in two, two, two scriptures. It says Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter three. Yes. Now I want you to know that all of this I've shared with you is proven scripture. If that does not prove in with there that the Word of God prophesied this, told us this, then you simply do not want to believe and waste my time talking to you. Yeah. All that I read you, the prophets, what they foretold, in second, especially Second Timothy chapter 3, then the last days, this stuff would happen. That if you hate God, you love death. All that's in there. Mm -hmm. If you're not convinced now, go to somebody else. I can't help you. The Second Peter chapter 3. Well, don't go back to the slot of where you're getting this doctrine. Exactly. <laughs> Peter moved again. Hang on a second. I'll find him. <laughs> I know right he's in there. Before First John. Yep. He didn't change his address. <laughs> <laughs> let me just share with you something here. Now, how many's ever sat back and wondered? Well, come on, y'all. Admit this. Oh Lord, how long? Mm. Mm. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, you, know, you I wonder. Just, I say, Lord, come quickly. Yeah, Amen. That's what you pray, right? I just want to get it down so we get it over with. Lord, come quickly. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. When you see when you see the sickness around you of mankind, not just physical, but spiritual sickness, you wonder, Lord, how long before you say enough is enough? Right. You know, my, my, when my dad, right before he passed, he wanted to go home. He really did. He was tired. The longer I live, the more I know how he feels. Mm -hmm. The more corrupt I see it, the more corrupt I see around me, the, the more I want to be with whether it's it is no corruptness, okay? Aging yeah. is a blessing to be ready to go. It is. It, it really is. is. If I were not, if I didn't know where I was going, I'd be scared to death. But if we were to pray, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But I want to tell you something. Now, please understand this. I know we all look around and think, well, why is this going on like this? Why is this killed? Why is he being so patient? I'm going to read you in the Bible why he's patient. And you better be thankful he is. There are souls out there still waiting to be delivered. And your job, my job is to go to those souls and those people. That's my job. I know I get on the radio and talk about all issues, but the main thrust of my program is to reach people for Christ. Mm -hmm. right. They educate his body in the truth. Second Peter chapter 3. Look at verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. I mean slowness or patience. But it is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad that's true? Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad he didn't end it 50 years ago? He's given us time, Joe, mm -hmm. to come to him. So if you have to listen today, you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't know who Christ is, you call me toll free anytime. I will call you back at 800 777 4403. I'll call you back. I want to tell you about Christ. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's being law. He's being patient with all of this, so you may know who he is. You know, he's being merciful, Butch. That's called yes. Yeah. It's called beautiful grace. That's what it is in First John. That's right after Second Peter. It certainly is. It ain't hard to find, is it? <laughs> I'm already there. Mm -hmm. This is some beautiful verses written to all of us. <coughs> Mankind without Christ is nothing. He's just dust. His life is a vapor. His, his being without the Holy Spirit is just a useless existence. It has nothing to glorify the Father or help anybody else really. <laughs> but second Peter, I mean second John, first John chapter two. My little children, these things are right unto you that ye sin not. You don't have to sin. If any man sin, 
we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Uh, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm sharing this to give you hope, folks. If you're out there, to, and this is all concerned you, and it should, to the point that you know the world's going this way. You don't know what it is to be redeemed by the blood of Christ and see the joy and hope that's in us today. I want to share with you. And He is a preparation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Mm -hmm. No matter who you are, where you are, He died on the cross at Calvary. I don't care whether you're black or white or red or yellow or polka dot or whatever it may be. It makes no difference to Him. He died for you. This insanity we're sharing right now would be called man's rejected him. But I'm talking to you now. You don't have to reject him. The choice is yours personally. You maybe can't change the world. You can't change this country. But you can, by his grace and mercy, change your life. And most likely it will not just change your life. That's true. You influence others. You can't help it. Now listen to the next verse. And we hereby do know that we know him if we keep some of his commandments. Oh. Wow. That's still a requirement? Mm hmm But I thought that's all done away with, Kelly. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth thy commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So if you have someone tell you that, they're, that they believe in Christ, but they're living in an abomination like homosexuality, or they're, they're shacking up, or doing other things that we know are contrary to Scripture, they're not born-again Christians. Yeah. They can cry, they love them all they want, but he says they're liars. Now, either I believe this book, or I believe them. Let's take a vote. Who do I believe? We're not voting, but... Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, folks, this is easy. If they say they believe in Him and love Him, they will obey Him. How many people do you know that say they believe in Christ but live in sin and don't care? And you know we condone it if we keep the mouth shut? Right, Kelly? Right. How many people are Christians that sit there and bury themselves in front of Satan vision all day long? All day long. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know, hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to close on that. And I just want you to see all the proof. I just read you the scriptures and offered the last little bit, the hope of salvation. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Yep. Understand that. That goes for individuals. That goes for nations. Don't be... Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Give your life to Christ. Let Him shine through you. Maybe you'll not see it. I said, you may not change the world, but you can reach one individual with the hope of Christ. Let your heart be so attuned to that individual's soul that Christ can speak through you and touch that person. Is that good? Amen. If you allow that, not because you're good, not because you're anything at all but a, but a mere mortal, but because Christ lives in you and the Holy Spirit inside you, you can reach out and touch his soul and watch them rejoice in the salvation of Christ. Let's not go into eternity without bringing in some, some souls behind us that we have, we're honored to lead to Christ. Mm -hmm. Is that important? Mm -hmm. Anybody want to say anything before we close? I'm thrilled to be here. I uh, thank God that we're here together today. Amen. This didn't happen by accident. This was not put together by my choice or your choice. Our Father in Heaven knew this day before we ever created it was going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. well, I was born to simpler times There was all the pain and wasn't the crime Many a father died in the fight Her freedom was precious Our God-given
Wait, wait. 